Well, we've covered all four of the main characters, and by God has there been a lot to talk with them. But what about the supporting cast? Are they as developed and as memorable as our four leads? No, they are not. Not even close. In either version. But there is still a better one, and we're going to look at it. This is Best Supporting Cast. Yeah, in a story about being hidden from the world with only two people knowing of your existence, there isn't very much that a supporting cast has to offer, and this story is no exception. The characters here mostly feel like tools to the story. There's the twins, Carrie and Corey, whose purpose is to add cuteness to the story and serve as someone for Kathy and Christopher to take care of as they develop into adults. There's the grandfather, who is the reason the children have to stay locked up in the first place and the one to determine whether Corinne gets the money. There's Bart Winslow, who's Corinne's new boyfriend and future husband, and unknowingly one of many distractions to Corinne from the well-being of her children. John the Butler is the only servant with a name, and... We'll discuss his purpose later on. It's complicated. And then there's the children's father, whose death at the beginning of the story kicks off the plot. Though whether or not he counts as a supporting character is kind of debatable because he dies pretty early on in the story, but for the sake of this video, I'll count him as one. Doesn't really sound like much, does it? Now, I think it's worth mentioning that some of these characters, such as Carrie, Bart Winslow, and John the Butler, would all have much more screen time and development in Lifetime's adaptation of the sequels. But since the original didn't have any follow-ups, it just wouldn't be fair to factor those in. So keep in mind, this is only looking at how they're portrayed in this installment. The sequels are great, but unfortunately, they don't count. So, I guess the way to determine which set of underdeveloped tools is better is by asking which one is more memorable and feels less like tools. So, which version has that honor? Well, for the most part, the 87 film seems to, and a big part of that lies in the acting. Even though the roles are still minor, they got some very good actors to portray them, and thus they stand out a lot more. Take the twins, for example. Considering that their identities are primarily to be these cute and innocent little kids, which of these pairs do you think do that job better? Mama! Where have you been? Where have you been? Mommy! Oh, Mom, sorry. Do you think it's a good smell? It doesn't look like an orange? It's a smell. <laughs> I can't wait to show it to Mama when she comes. You probably said the original. The ones in the remake aren't terrible, but there's just nothing especially memorable about them except for an incredible crying performance that Carrie gives near the end of the movie. <laughs> but aside from that, they're about as generic of kids as they come. The ones in the original, on the other hand, are frickin' adorable. Just about everything these little tykes say just makes me crack a huge smile about how cute it is. Maybe it's just because they seem more innocent and helpless, but they come off as a lot more endearing. Plus, they do look a lot more like twins here. The ones in the remake maybe could pass off as siblings, but twins? No. The grandfather in the original has similar advantages. He's mentioned a ton in the remake, but only appears for one scene and is portrayed as a completely generic old man with a good hairstyle. The one in the original was much more like an estranged, bitter father. He wasn't scary or anything, but he always had this grim and forbidding nature to him. Even in the scenes where he's shown to be reconciling with Corinne, he still comes off as a cold, creepy old geezer. Speaking of which, that's another advantage that the original has. Rather than just having Corinne constantly talk about bonding with her father, we actually get to see a few sequences of this throughout the movie. There's even a sequence where Kathy and Christopher encounter him while they're sneaking around the mansion one night, and he starts hugging Kathy in his sleep thinking that she's Corinne. All of this works great because in film, you're supposed to show rather than tell. So by actually showing Corinne's time with the grandfather on screen and having him interact with the main characters at least once in the story, he actually feels more like an actual character than a tool. What about Bart Winslow? Well, both incarnations do a good job at conveying the character's charisma and affection for Corinne in the relatively short amount of screen time that they have. But I felt the one in the original was a bit more suave and elegant, and thus stood out a little bit more. And like the grandfather, he has slightly more involvement with the story. Near the end of the movie, the kids decide to use his wedding to their mother as a cover-up to evade the security in the mansion. But then they decide to introduce themselves to him and expose their mother once they learn what she was really up to. And again, having him actually meet with and interact with the children makes him feel a bit less like a tool here. 
And his reaction to learning that his fiance is a cold-blooded murderer is pretty freaking hilarious. Then there's the character who probably got the biggest upgrade of all, John the Butler. The remake pretty much sticks to what he was in the book, an exposition deliverer with only a few appearances here and there. The original gives him a much larger role, by having him serve as a watchman for Libya to make sure that the children don't try to escape through the house. He's not really scary, or at least not as much as Kathy thinks he is, but he is pretty creepy, not just in his appearance, but also in the fact that he just acts like a mindless subservient robot slave throughout the movie. And it really makes you wonder what working for someone like Olivia for years has done to him. Not a revolutionary character, but he is still an effective obstacle for the children in the story, and his creepiness makes him much more memorable than the generic guy in the remake with almost no relevance to the- Stop. Wait, Stop. what? Please. We're Corinne's children. My god. Go. Before I'm sent after you. I'll cut the power on the fence. Go! Okay, I'll say it. WHERE THE HELL DID THIS COME FROM?! Did he know that the children were there the whole time? Did he just happen to realize the circumstances when they revealed who they were? I'm sorry, but there was literally no build-up to this whatsoever. If you want to follow the original movie's portrayal, you should have done it sooner. It's too late now. And besides, this guy isn't creepy at all. Sorry, but you are still inferior. There's also the scary groundskeeper who was created for the 87 film, who watches the outside of the house for the children. He doesn't have as much screen time as John, but he is just as effective of an obstacle, and is relatively scary in the few scenes that he is in. The one supporting character that I felt was legitimately better in the remake was the children's late father. The casting in both versions was good, but in the original, it's flat out said that he loves Kathy the most of his family, and constantly ignores the rest of them so he can dote on her and get her all these expensive gifts. While still close with Kathy in the remake, he clearly gives a crap about the rest of his family. The reason he gets Kathy that expensive ring is to boost her spirits about him not being around as much with his new promotion and to help her stay strong during that time. But aside from that, the side characters in the remake are pretty much a spot on portrayal of what they were in the book. Underdeveloped tools to drive the plot or provide exposition, with limited screen time and played by sufficient but pretty forgettable actors. By giving the ones in the original more screen time, more involvement with the story, and casting very talented actors in the roles, they come off as much more memorable and feel more like characters than just tools. It's not saying much, but it is saying something. Point goes to the old. My god. 